This is Eurasian water milfoil. This plant is typically controlled by herbicides, but in some situations it's found early enough or in low density areas and can be removed by hand. This video is created to show people how to properly remove Eurasian water milfoil from their lake. Another advantage to hand removing Eurasian water milfoil is it can save your lake money. It also gets people involved on the lake and you're going to learn more about your lake. In hand pulling Eurasian water milfoil, it allows you to do something right away that can help out with the problem. Eurasian water milfoil is an aquatic invasive plant from Europe and Asia. Most of the plants shown in this video are Eurasian water milfoil, which we will refer to as simply milfoil. You may notice a few other plants, but the majority are milfoil. All footage was taken in central and north central Wisconsin. When we refer to a diver, we are talking about a snorkeler or scuba diver. A dive flag is always recommended while diving, but is required in Wisconsin if you will be more than 150 feet from shore. Manual removal of milfoil can occur whenever a person can access the plants. Removal in autumn is more difficult because milfoil becomes brittle. In Wisconsin, a permit is not needed to manually remove invasive plants. However, you should always contact a local water resource professional or aquatic invasive species coordinator. Before beginning a manual removal effort, have a disposal site ready. All removed material must be disposed of above the ordinary high water mark. Eurasian water milfoil is frequently introduced to new areas through the aquarium trade and spreads quickly between water bodies by fragments being transported by boats, trailers, and other vectors. Once established, it can prevent boating, swimming, and other recreational activities by forming dense colonies of vegetation. This stand of milfoil is growing down to 16 feet deep. In very clear water, milfoil has been observed growing beyond 20 feet deep. These dense colonies often form thick mats on the water's surface, which prevents sunlight from reaching other plants below. Dense stands of milfoil can remain standing in a dormant state under the ice. Immediately after the ice melts, these plants are already preventing sunlight from reaching seedlings of other species. Manual removal of milfoil can be an effective method of control. However, it is not always the most appropriate method. This technique is best employed when milfoil is present in small patches or is scattered in low densities throughout a lake. It is theoretically possible to remove any amount of milfoil with enough time and effort. However, it is typically unrealistic to remove large, dense stands of milfoil by manual techniques alone. In these cases, manual removal is best used in combination with an aquatic herbicide treatment. In Wisconsin, application of an aquatic herbicide requires a permit from the Department of Natural Resources. When deciding if manual removal is the best option for your lake, 
consider any characteristics of your project area that may make it more difficult to find or remove the milfoil. Notice the water clarity and the particles in the water. Diving on cloudy days, before the sun hits the lake, or later in the day when the sun goes down can improve the visibility underwater. Sometimes, an abundance of other plants can become an obstacle in removing milfoil. Finding the bottom to see smaller milfoil can also be difficult. This is why you should map the area and check it several times throughout the summer to ensure all the milfoil has been removed. This milfoil is growing in 10 feet of water. At this depth, water pressure and a person's ability to hold their breath can be limiting factors. When removing tall plants, make sure not to get tangled in them, which could create fragments. Logs, docks, and underwater debris can make removal a challenge. Plants can be tangled in branches, and root systems may be under rocks or logs. Make sure to thoroughly check around obstacles for plants that may be hidden. Single plants or distinct groups of plants should be marked with a brightly colored buoy for easy relocation. These buoys should be placed immediately before the manual removal effort. Long-term deployment of buoys may require a permit. Check with your local aquatic invasive species coordinator. Buoys should be placed next to, not directly on top of, the target plant. This allows for removal of the plant without risk of the plant becoming tangled in the buoy cord. A diver can easily look along the surface of the water to find the next plant to remove. This increases the efficiency of the project and minimizes their time in the water, which is especially important if the water is cold. The most effective and efficient method of manually removing milfoil is with snorkelers or scuba divers. A diver can easily scoop their hands into the sediment and lift the plant from below. It is important to get underneath the plant to minimize the risk of fragmenting the stems and to ensure the root crown is removed. Each diver should be paired with a partner in a small boat. This partner has many important responsibilities. They need to watch for fragments, collect pulled plants, and watch for any hazards to the diver. Different sediment types determine how easy it is to remove the plants. Your partner should be nearby with a net so you don't have to swim far to dispose of the milfoil. This saves time and energy, plus you can stay focused on a particular area. Make sure to ball up the milfoil so it doesn't break or get caught in your equipment. Even the smallest piece can start a new plant. Notice that when the plant is removed, the diver does not kick too much with his fins. This is so the sediment is not disturbed, maintaining good visibility. Having a partner above the water is important. Not only do they collect the milfoil, but they can easily point out missed fragments. Notice if there are several milfoil plants. Here the diver pulls a plant 
and the water begins to get murky. He quickly gets the second plant before he can't see it. It is important to collect any fragments. They can form roots and start new plants. For smaller jobs, or in shallow water, a portable container for milfoil is a handy tool. Be creative! This is a foam water noodle attached to a plastic colander. It is easy to move around and doesn't hang down very deep, so it won't get caught on plants or other debris. Again, notice the diver is careful to keep his fins on the surface of the water to not disturb the sediments. What if you don't feel comfortable going under the water? That's okay. In certain situations, a rake can work too. You have to be careful though. Notice the rake gets into the sediment deep enough to get the roots and doesn't cut off the stems. This may take practice. In deeper water, guide the rake along the plant and spin the rake so the stems get wrapped around the rake. Then gently pull the plant straight up. Watch for fragments when using this method. The downside of using a rake is that the water can get murky. Polaroid sunglasses are essential. This person was trying to remove milfoil from a boat without Polaroid sunglasses. When plants are removed, it is important to make sure they don't fragment. Keeping them in front of you allows you to watch for fragments. Small plants are easy to remove and transport to your partner. Larger plants should be balled up in your hand to prevent fragmenting. Your partner should stay close enough to be ready to help, but not too close that they are in your way. They should have a fine mesh net with a long handle so they can easily help you collect milfoil. Fishing nets with larger mesh should not be used because they may not keep the fragments contained. Be sure to get the entire plant into the net. 
Holding the plants out of the water while transporting helps prevent fragments from escaping. Large milfoil plants are more difficult to remove and handle. This diver is having difficulty swimming while bringing a large plant to his partner. Wetsuits keep you warm and help you float, but are not essential. While working in shallow water, the buoyancy of this diver's wetsuit keeps him afloat and minimizes the effort required to remove a large amount of milfoil. Keeping the diver warm is important when the water is cold. Notice the lack of other vegetation which made it easy to find the milfoil plants. This removal took place in the spring when the water temperature was in the 40s. Have your areas mapped and keep track of where you've been. This helps to see progress and lets you know where you still need to work. A map also allows you to quickly find areas that you want to recheck. Make sure to get all the roots and don't break the plant up as you remove it. Ball up the plant as you transport it to your partner so it doesn't fragment. Constantly moving allows you to stay out of murky water. Keep your partner close enough, but not in your way. Have a plan of how to dispose of the milfoil once it's removed. With permission, gardens and farm fields are great places to use milfoil for compost. Know your limitations. Have the help you need. Have a plan.